Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Living Our American Dream. Today I'm going to cover a couple things. I'm, as you can see, in the pole barn again. And I showed you that the ceiling is up and the lights are now all up. All of those yellow boxes that I had before are all on the ceiling now and in place. And I want to show you something that I'm, I'm doing to kind of tidy up the cords. Um, I'll show you that in just a second. And also in this, this video, I'm going to cover, we're taking a break from working on the barn and working on the house for a little bit. Marcus is behind the camera today, and we are going to make an attempt at making a mousetrap car. Um, he's been infatuated with trying to build something. This young man likes to build things and be creative, and that's what we're going to try to do today. So I hope you like this video, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so before we get started on the mousetrap car, I want to show you this one more time. You guys are getting used to seeing this view right here, but all the lights are up and oriented in the same direction now along with the ribbing of the steel. And I wanted to show you over here, you can see these lights right here are hung in the right spot and plugged in in the right spot, but the cords just kind of hang everywhere and there was no good way for me to run these cords uh, and make them look good with a black cord and a white ceiling. So what I did is I went to the Home Depot and I found some, they're called, what are they called? They're called a, a cord channel right here. You can see a five foot cord channel. And when you look at these things, there is a split end in them right here. And basically it's for hiding a cord. Like if you had a cord running in your house somewhere and you just kind of wanted to you know, make it so it's not so visible. Um, it's got a sticky back, so there's a, a sticky side of this. A little piece of tape comes off there and it sticks. Uh, my intention was to, you know, put the cords in there and then route it up in a way and then, you know, attach it to the ceiling with a uh, conduit strap of some sort. But what I found is that sticky stuff actually sticks to the ribs just enough uh, to allow me to uh, let it stay there and we'll see if it sticks there over the course of a year But this is what it looks like when I do it. So I end up with just a little uh, Nubbin here of a cord and a little strip here And I bring the excess together right at the receptacle and kind of tie it up and zip tie it So it's nice and tight up there to the ceiling and makes it look real nice um, At least nicer than it would have if I just let it uh, Hang out like these ones another nifty addition addition that I did to the barn is I added this over the air digital antenna. I had a TV in this barn for a while and I had just a one of those indoor ones that looks like a flat plate like a just a plastic piece of plate there or whatever but it wouldn't come in through the steel walls of the building and it definitely doesn't come in through the steel walls and the steel ceiling and the steel roof so what I did is I added that antenna out there and you can see I kind of routed the cable over here and then it, you can't really see it back there but it pokes up through um, over there in the corner it kind of pokes up through but uh, yeah, there's only one TV out here but we like watching football and, and doing things while we're either butchering deer or working on projects or whatever so now we've got a TV and all the, the main channels come in. This is a commercial on right now, but we're watching college football today. It's a Saturday. And uh, just out here working in the barn, got a little football on in the background. Okay, guys, you can see, I'm not sure what we're gonna use yet to build this thing, but I've got a few things from around the barn here that I just gathered up. I've got a few different size wooden dowels that we can try. Um, I have plenty of this plastic pipe, a few small pieces of half inch conduit. This is an arrow, actually an old broken arrow that I that I found, but it's a carbon arrow and I'm not sure how to use this yet, but it, it might just work good for a part of the axles. I have these large nails from an old project. That might work. We have Lego wheels from Marcus's Lego set that these just just barely fit in here. I'd have to figure out a way to attach that here to make this to make an axle out of it. But you never know, I might be able to figure that out. And then this piece of one by pine right here. So this is what we're gonna start with. And we'll think about this and we'll see if we can come up with a plan. Okay guys, we took, I forgot to mention in that last clip, we have a little bit of uh, wire, stainless wire, and a pair of uh, pliers here. 
And if you can see in the camera, we've added an arm to our mouse trap by wrapping that wire around here and just tightening it up. So now we've got, this is gonna be our, our driving arm. So that's set. We took a piece of this pine and we cut it down just wide enough to be able to put the mouse trap on there. We'll end up drilling some holes in here and mounting the mouse trap on there. And we took a piece of this, I think it's 3 8 dowel, and with the drill and a small drill, I put the dowel in the vise and I drilled a hole in each end of the dowel and then I was able to mount a screw through the Lego wheel and these large wheels are going to be our drive wheels. Uh, the small ones are going to be our front wheels but this is what we're going to use. Now I've cut these just so that they're wider than the, the base itself uh, for, the, for the car. Now we're going to find a drill that's a little bit bigger than this dowel and we're going to drill a through hole right through here to mount our axles through and then we'll slide them in there and make sure that the hole fits and everything everything uh, moves good. So we pre-drilled our holes and I'm doing this just by hand but we pre-drilled our holes with this smaller drill. Now we're going to go with one size bigger than 3 8 which is 25 64 in my drill set and we're going to see if we can get a straight enough hole in here to drill this through here and make an axle hole. This isn't pre precision drilling, but we've got two holes that'll be our axle holes here. We'll get these cleaned up a little bit, but this wooden dowel that we used should fit right through there and should be able to roll. Like I said, I'll have to sand this up perhaps and get it to have a little bit less friction in there because we don't want our wheels having friction. And then to drive, to drive our, our wheel, I'll have to have a spacer in here and we'll put our string right along the edge right here and it'll just kind of pull on this and unwind it as it goes. Okay, we had a little bit of a hiccup here. What I wanted to do is have our axle cross through here and our drive wheels on the outside and I wanted to have our string that we're gonna drive with come through here. So I attempted to take a large drill bit and drill a cross hole through here. What happened is it chipped this out. So rather than leave it chipped out like that, I took this chisel and just kind of tapped it down through here to make a nice little notch. I know it's not exactly on center, but it'll still do for what we want to do. Now the next thing we're going to do, I drilled these holes by hand, so our drive axle is going to be back here with our string to drive through this hole. And when I put the front axle in here, the wheels, the axles, since I did this by hand, they're not in the same plane, okay? So that means only three wheels touch at the same time. So we are going to change direction in the middle of our design and we're gonna cut this end off so we get rid of this hole and we're gonna drill a smaller hole in here that will drive one of these nails through that Marcus has and we'll take our saw and our chisel and we'll chisel a similar notch out of the front and we'll have a single front wheel so this will be a three wheeled machine when we're done so let's go that route so we put our drive wheel in and I actually over drilled this hole one more size larger so that we got plenty of uh, play in there. Then I put a couple of washers in between here uh, just to keep the rubber off of the wood while it's driving. And our front wheel I did the same. I put the nail through here, this cross hole, and I have two small washers in here just to keep that from rubbing on the wood. So our car looks like this now. It's going to be a three wheeled vehicle. And I'm just, I drill a couple of through holes through the mouse trap, and we'll just put a couple of screws in here. This wood's pretty soft, so it should drill right, or screw right in fairly easily. You don't need a big screw for this, um, just to hold this guy in place. So that mouse trap is on there good now. And now we've got to figure out how we're gonna attach our 
uh, we may have to reattach this. Our original design was going to have this to be to come back here and drive off of the side. Now we're going to drive off the center. So I'm thinking maybe uh, maybe another nail on here with a cross piece maybe. I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet. Mark and I are going to think about that right now. Okay, so I don't know how this is going to work here, but I put two dowels on here instead of that one piece of nail. And we ought to be able to pull this back. I put a cross dowel in here to keep the spacing and then we'll attach our string to this little piece of metal. Uh, it's more of that uh, uh, wire that I kind of twisted on here to clamp this because I want to be able to pull from the center. So we'll drop this down here and we'll tie this string up to it and we'll give it its inaugural run. We'll see if it works. So here's Marcus, he's gonna give it its initial run here. Now this string is actually attached to the axle, so it's only gonna go so far and then it will start winding itself back up. But let's see how it goes, buddy. Now it moves. So what we would need to do, if we wanted it to go farther, is we would need to have that arm be a lot longer. And we can try that if you want to. And we want it to go to like all the way up to like well, there you go. That's a mousetrap car. I know it's not as perfect as it could be. Um, I think if we made the lever arm a little bit longer or the wheels a little bit bigger um, and tweaked it a little bit, I think we could get it to go quite a ways farther. But that's not what we were aiming for today. We were aiming just to make a car that worked, weren't we, Mark? Mm -hmm. So that's it for this one, and thanks for watching.